The TakeOver saga is probably one of the biggest ongoing events in world football right now. When the announcement came forward that the Glazer family were willing to sell, millions of United fans celebrated. At long last, their reign of corruption and embezzlement was coming to an end. However, a year has passed since the announcement, and it doesn't look like the Glazer family are willing to sell. Have United fans been paid once again? Let's find out. Before we go on the current TakeOver saga, Let's go back a little in time and understand where the Glazers' reign began. To some of you, this may be the first takeover you heard about, but in reality, from 84 to 98, three times people tried to take over the club. In 2003, a rich American, Malcolm Glazer, got 3%. He already had a football team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who won the Super Bowl in 2002. Over the next years, he got more United. By 2005, Glazer's family had almost all of it, spending about 800 million. But Glazer didn't just use his own money, he borrowed 500 million, creating big money problems. Every year they had to pay back 60 million, and they also sold 200 million in loans to hedge funds. So even though Glazer was super rich, he didn't just use his own money to own United, he used loans and got into big money troubles. Instead of using their own money, the Glazers used United's earnings to pay off debts, taking out tens of millions each season. To cover the gap, they worked on securing deals and sponsorships, with Ed Woodward, whom we'll talk about later, playing a key role. Under his leadership, revenue grew from 48 million in 2005 to 117 million in 2012. However, debts kept rising, causing concerns among fans. In 2010, wealthy supporters tried to take over the Red Knights, but failed. They offered one billion, falling short of the Glazers' valuation, who wanted double the 800 million they paid themselves. The Glazers initially made headlines when shortly afterwards, they found a way to earn a substantial financial boost by selling shares on the New York Stock Exchange. This strategic move was positioned as a means to alleviate debts and bolster the family's finances. However, the narrative took a darker turn when Malcolm Glazer the patriarch of the family passed away in 2014, leaving his sons in control of the club. The family's decision to extract dividends from Man United, essentially siphoning funds from the club, became a contentious and scrutinised practice in English football. Over five years, from 2015 to 2020, the Glazers managed to pocket a staggering £90 million from the club, raising eyebrows and serious questions about their commitment to the team's on-field success. Sadly, Despite the financial unrest, Man United's status as the fourth largest football club globally remained intact. The fears of passing financial strain onto supporters also proved unfounded, with ticket prices frozen for the ninth consecutive year by 2021. In the transfer market, Man United continued to flex its financial muscle, outspending all but one rival over eight years. The financial strength seemingly insulated the club from immediate on-field consequences. However, this did not mean the Glazers' profit-driven ownership style was without repercussions. The departure of the legendary Sir Alex Ferguson in 2013 marked a significant turning point. The subsequent appointments of ill-suited managers and the lack of a robust recruitment structure led to a visible decline on the pitch. The absence of a director of football and strategic planning meant that each new manager brought in their preferences, resulting in expensive signings that failed to make a lasting impact. This period of managerial instability saw United drop from first to mid-table over the last few years and they failed to bring home the league title since then. Gaping holes in the squad and aging stars on hefty wages point to a lack of foresight. In contrast, rival clubs like Man City and Liverpool attribute their on-field triumphs to a clear, off-field vision, emphasising the importance of strategic planning and a unified approach to building a competitive squad. Beyond the footballing aspects, the Glazer era has seen Old Trafford, once a fortress, fall into a state of despair. Unlike other ambitious clubs investing in new stadiums or redeveloping projects, Manchester United's home ground has not seen significant improvements. Reports of leaks, patchy Wi-Fi and uncomfortable seating highlight a disregard for the fans' experience and the club's stature. Even more glaring is the dismissive attitudes towards women's football. While a women's side had unofficially existed for decades, the Glazers dismantled it, 
deeming it unprofitable and unnecessary to the club's core business. Only in 2018, amid growing societal awareness and pressure, did the club reinstate a women's team. The disregard for women's football reflects a broader issue of detachment between the ownership and the diverse fan base. The Glazer era at Man United has witnessed the club's decline from the pinnacle of footballing dominance to second place in their city. Seeing their rival surge ahead has left the supporters dissatisfied, but fans would have been shocked by the news that the Glazer family was soon to announce. Before we move on, please make sure to like the video if you've enjoyed it so far and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Towards the end of 2022, the Glazer family made a historic decision, saying that they were ready to kickstart the Man United takeover process. This revelation coincided with another bombshell, the termination of Cristiano Ronaldo's contract. The dual announcement sent shockwaves through the footballing world, setting the stage for a dramatic sequence of events that would unfold over the following months. February 2023 arrived, with the Rain Group whom the Glazers had hired to help them oversee the process, setting a deadline for the first round of bids. Among the interested parties, two figures stood out. Sheikh Jassim and Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the founder of Ineos. Both made their bids public, offering insights into their vision for the club's future. Sheikh Jassim, the chairman of the Qatar Islamic Bank and son of the country's former prime minister, asserted his lifelong connection to Man United. Ratcliffe, reportedly the wealthiest man in the United Kingdom with a fortune of $15.3 billion, according to Forbes, brought a formidable financial tussle to the table. March 2023 marked the reception of the second round of bids. Sheikh Jassim and Ratcliffe remained in contention, joined by six other investors, including the intriguing entry of Thomas Ziliakas, a Finnish businessman and former Nokia executive. Ziliakas brought an unconventional proposal to the bidding war, pledging to invite Manchester United supporters from around the world to become co-owners. This injection of fan involvement made a unique dimension to the ownership narrative. However, by the end of April, the Rain Group opted to move to a third round of bids, signaling Ziliakis' departure from the process. May 2023 witnessed a new chapter in the saga. Reports circulated that Radcliffe had submitted a revised offer, escalating the intensity of the competition. In response, Sheikh Jassim, unwavering in his determination to secure ownership, submitted a new and improved fourth bid. By now, the fans were optimistic that the club would not be short of wealthy investors. June 7th, 2023, etched itself as a pivotal day in the unfolding drama. Sheikh Jassim lodged a fifth bid, a move widely reported as a take-it-or-leave-it offer. The footballing world held its breath as the fate of Manchester United hung in the balance. Despite the prolonged negotiations, August 14th, 2023 dawned with no concrete sign of a sale. All of these leave the question, were the Glazers ever planning on selling the club? Well, it seems United fans were played once again, as Glazers' rejection of Jasim's $6 billion bid proved they never had intentions of selling. The Glazers only put out that notice to attract investors, which is another item on their long list of cunning businesses. The interest from Qatar was more than likely to be rivaled, and they held on to the possibility of owning the club while also getting investment from an outside party. This tactic played well for them, as per the latest news surrounding the takeover. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is close to acquiring a 25% stake in the club. Despite this, the Glazers will continue to lead at Old Trafford, although there's anticipation that Ratcliffe may progressively increase his ownership in the Red Devils. This development might be disheartening for United fans hoping for a change in ownership after a decade without a Premier League title under the Glazers. Do you think the Glazer family will leave Man United anytime soon? Let us know in the comments. GOF, any last words? Yeah. Like and subscribe.